Hi, this is Ram from Crossmind Studio and welcome back to the 5th chapter of animated content creation series. In previous chapter we made a nice 3D layout for our scene and kind of figured out what all we need and we populated all of these objects on the layout. This gives us quite a good idea of what we need to do to get to the final scene. We need to model all of these objects in the higher details and then work towards the final setup of the lighting, material, shading, etc. So this pre-visualization is what we made in the previous chapter based on the animatic from the chapter before that. And today's focus is going to be just about modeling our main subject of the scene which is going to be this bottle that you have seen in the trailer. This one is a, quite a dummy object that we made just for the purpose of uh, pre-visualization. But now we need to make final model for this one along with the feathers, shaders, label etc everything. So let's get started with this. And for those of you who are quite new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe and uh, do check out the playlist section because this video is part of ongoing series which is kind of a 12 to 13 episode series. First thing I'm going to do is uh, make one duplicate of this one and uh, then press M and make a new collection called bottle. And now I'm going to hide my 3D layout because we just need this bottle. I'll press Alt R and Alt G to reset transformation and place it right above the grid over here. So for the design reference, I have prepared a few images from the final model just in case if you guys want to follow the exact same design. So you can download this from the link in the description. There are four or five different images, whichever you prefer. So just pick whatever you press shift A and uh, click on the reference and bring this bottle profile reference. And now I'm going to scale this one with uh, from the parameter over here. So maybe around six. We need to match this size to this size because uh, this bottle is set to the right scale of the layout. So we kind of following a certain scale for the scene that we need to follow. And especially when you're dealing with hair particles and dynamics, you would want to make sure that you follow the exact same scale. Otherwise, it would be really difficult to scale the model up and down later with the hair particles and all that going on. Just select this one, the reference image, and you should have this option called transparency. And this would give you transparency in your reference image. Now I'm going to align this one with my model that is already in the center and scale it around 6.4 or something. And this should be just enough. Okay, so this is good. Now I can hide my bottle. Just disable this one and I can freeze this one so that we don't move it by mistake. Now this bottle we are going to model with the curve objects. If you see in the add menu, we have Vizier curve. Now the reason behind this is because this gives you much more control over how you bring out curvy shapes with the very least points. If you were modeling this one with the polygons, then it would be really difficult to model some perfect radius or the long arcs, which would be very convenient when you're dealing with uh, with a busy curve over here. Now that is totally up to your preference. There is no hard and fast rule about this one. So I'll bring one uh, curve, busy curve over here and uh, go to the edit mode with the tab and delete all these vertices because we don't need these ones. We need one uh, new vertex which we can create with a control click. So basically what happens is when you let me just bring one curve over here. Okay. When you control click and create a curve, this will give you one point in the center and this will give you one handle on the right and left. Now, if I select this point again and uh, press control click, this will create one straight line. That is because we are using the vector curve right now. Now, if you want some uh, curve in the in this Bezier curve, then you would need to press V and we will give you what kind of uh, handles you want. You want automatic handle, free handle aligned, so vector is for the straight point. So we don't want straight, we want free. Okay, for this purpose, like anything but the vector. So now if I press control click, this will give you a curve based on these two points. And you can rotate these, scale these, and based on that basic curve tool will create one nice arc. And this is like really smooth arc, which is which I think I find really difficult to model with the polygon modeling tool. The only thing you need to keep in mind is uh, you need to set the right size for the handles. Otherwise, 
it would uh, give you a really unpredictable odds. Let's say if you want to turn this point from here to here, then uh, because this handle is so large, it would be it would give you arc like this if I make a new point. To fix that, I'll scale this handle down first. And now if I control click, it will give me a shorter arc. If I hadn't had scaled it down, then if I control click, it would give me larger arc. Basically, these are tangents. If you have studied some of the geometry, I think it should be pretty obvious what is going on over here. So I'll select all, delete these and uh, work towards tracing this profile. Control click, scale this down and set this to free with the V menu. You can also find this one in the control points. Yeah, set handle type V over here. So I'll press control click over here, rotate this one, control click over here. And this is really convenient, I think. With a really few points, I can actually bring out the perfect shape which I need for this purpose. So I think one point here should be enough. With just uh, these two points, I could trace all of this profile. Control click over here, control click over here and uh, move this handle. Now this is quite similar to pen tool that you use in Adobe Illustrator or uh, in the Photoshop. So those of you who are coming from the graphical background would understand this tool and it should be quite intuitive. So. I'll click over here and just bring one point till over here. And that's all we need for our bottle purpose. We will be using screw modifier and this bottle have a 360 radial symmetry. This profile should serve the purpose of uh, for modeling our bottle. So if I bring one screw modifier now, just a moment. Before that, we need to set the origin. We want the screw modifier to work from this point. First thing I'm going to do is go to the edit mode and select this point over here and now press shift s and bring my cursor to select it and this will bring my 3d cursor to this point and now it exit the edit mode and go to the object menu set origin and origin to 3d cursor now the origin of this object this yellow dot have shifted from here to here if i undo you can see this point was over here now this one is over here now if I apply the screw modifier, this should give you perfect shape for the bot. And that's the beauty of working with the curves. And the really fun part about this is you can really iterate the shape of the bottle and uh, it's really quick and easy to work with a, a curve tool. Now if I go to the edit mode, we are still dealing with this curve and if I move any of these points, you can see how I can quickly explore different kind of designs and uh, working with the screw modifier is really fun. If I was working with a polygon modeling tool, this would be really painful. I think this gives you a good enough idea. And like I said, those of you who have already been following this channel and have seen the product advertisement tutorial where we modeled that can soda can object, they should have a pretty good command over this one. I'm going to delete this and uh, use this bottle. Now in the screw modifier over here, as we discussed in the beginners introduction series. So there are several parameters which, which would let you control this shape much more. And uh, you can basically define how many segments you need in the radial symmetry. And this in case you are doing some uh, formation animation of some sort for the bottle. Uh, this angle one is a really fun thing you can play with. Uh, disable the screw modifier for now. And let's go to the edit of this curve and select all these vertices. And now we can uh, just duplicate this entire curve. So I have two curves now. And now I can, uh, let me just uh, disable the grid. Now I can just scale it down and place it wherever I want. I have full control of the inner form as well. If I select these, these points then i can basically model the inner form and match it to exact same reference now 
over here i i'm having a bit of a hard time uh looking at where are the points and what all so there is an option for that you can just scale down the normals 0.01 and uh, your view should be much clearer after this now i can delete this point and uh, bring this one over here this one over here and quickly just place it where it needs to be control click now i can just select these two points and press f and this will fill this radius the empty gap between two points all right so we have a complete inner and outer profile now and now if i enable the screw modifier this will give me a really nice top shape bottom shape everything well packed and i don't need to convert this to polygon for now so i think yeah this is perfect and uh, now we can quickly model one uh, cork object that is going to be the the cap for this one now for the top part we just need to close it with a cylindrical object so i'll just bring one uh, basic uh, cylinder that's about it and uh, place it in the center move it on the top and we can just select this bottom face scale it down select this top face sorry move it up over here something like this that's about it we just need to give it some nice round radius so let's make it around this tall i'll select this top face and now if i press control b this should give me a nice bevel on the edge so let's make it around three segments and i'll select this one delete these faces select this entire loop in the search menu just type grid fill this should be good enough and uh, the next thing we are going to do is uh, make these ropes that these nice little threads that that are just wrapping around the neck of the bottle to do that what we can do is uh, i'll just bring one torus object and from here i can uh, change the radius of this uh, the main uh, form let's make it around this much and then scale it down all right let, let me just make a duplicate of this for now what we can do is uh, we can make multiple copies of this and uh, just randomize it with a proportionate editing tool so i think uh, i might have scaled down it a bit too much so that's okay you can just go to the edit mode and over here you will see a uh, sh shrink yeah shrink flatten so just enable this and uh, this way you will be able to increase the radius now go to the front mode and enable the proportionate editing tool and start working towards uh, randomizing this shape first i'll uh, tilt it a bit like this and uh, increase the radius of the brush select all of these make a duplicate and uh, enable the connected only and this way i'll be able to only rotate this part now select this one press l to select the connected faces and uh, make a duplicate randomize it a bit and this way we should be able to make it look like it's just wrapped around the faces i'm sure there are some add-ons which can help you with this this one but since we are only dealing with the one object so i don't mind really putting a bit of an effort and also it's a bit of a practice to model different kind of objects and uh, overcome the challenges so yeah that's about it i'm just going to duplicate all of these start randomizing this one and uh, mirror maybe i can mirror this one in uh, z yeah this should do randomize these a bit more we can just shade smooth i think we can um, add a few more into this let's make a duplicate of this one shrink this a bit rotate this over here 
make another duplicate place it over here make another duplicate scale it up place it over here i think this this much should be enough i don't really want to make it too heavy just one more to fill this area i guess uh, enable my reference again so more or less i think uh, we have the bottle now we just need uh, the feathers and we need this rope now this part over here is going to be the skull geometry and we will take care of this one later when we model the skull but for now so over here i'll just bring one a curve and circle disable the proportionate editing and why circle over here that is because we need this shape to be something like this in the edit mode if i go i'm just uh, trying to make a smooth like a fall the curve object should give you a nice shape for that so if i make a curve object over here now if in the settings of the curve object you can click on the geometry and uh, you can give it an extrude sorry depth is the right thing so i enable the depth and this way you should have this nice rope geometry that you would find really difficult to model with the polygons so it's easier this way i think more or less this should do now as i mentioned the skull geometry over here that we will add later so don't worry about that too much i can make a duplicate of this again just randomize a bit bit more just in case if we need a well distributed geometry so yeah now we need to create feathers for this now to create the feathers i'll bring one cylinder over here and make this one six sided and scale it down and make it really thin uh, we just need to grow some uh, feathers around it we don't really need this geometry to be very obvious and visible so i'll make it really tall we can replace this now with uh, this reference just in case if you guys need to have a right sense of the scale and the length of the feather i guess this much should be enough i'll go to the edit mode and add few loop cuts few loop cuts over here and give it nice round and smooth shape so it's a really thin stick and uh, there's nothing much to see over here the only thing we need over here is go to the top view and uh, i hope you can see it in the wireframe i just rotate it this way i'll select these two sides these two loops and uh, we only want the particles of the hair to grow from this side and this side and we don't want it all around this one and make it like a boom in the object data properties we can create one uh, group for this one and click assign and uh, make this one uh, for vertex group give it any name that you prefer and now if i go to the weight paint mode yeah in the weight paint mode this side and this side you can see is uh, receiving the weight of one and it's like a red red weight over here and uh, that means the weight paint is working fine the only thing we need to do is uh, in the weight edit mode let's grab one uh, different brush i'm in the weight paint mode and from here i'll click on this subtract brush and we don't want particles to grow to grow over here so i can just subtract these values from from uh, this weight group because this weight group is uh, selected it's all it's automatically working on it it's a really thin stick and i really hope you guys are not finding it too difficult to focus over here and now let's go to the object mode and uh, go to the properties of uh, the particles and click on the new particle system this will give you particles that you typically see now we don't need these particles instead we are going to click on the hair and this should give you hair particles all around in the 360 but if you scroll down in the particle properties all the way till the down and over see over here you should see vertex groups and this is where we are going to assign the four vertex group so now the particles are only emitting on this side and this side now we can just scale down these particles and uh, over here i can see there is still some weight 
uh, in this weight group so i can uh, paint it out and subtract it from here all right now in the top view we need these to be clumped particles i mean hair and we don't want it to be so fluffy there are few things i'm going to tweak before i do that make it interpolated instead of none in the children make sure we have thousand particles go to the parting section and increase the party now this way all those random basically they will part according to the the main strand and they will look like a uh, big clumps so these properties are very uh, difficult to understand just by the words so you can just play around with these there's nothing much here there are very few of these so i'll go to the edit mode of the particles now now we are in object mode and uh, over here you can see vertex paint and all that but when you have a hair particle object selected you should be able to see this nice comb icon that that lets you edit the hair particle now once you're in it there are few different kind of options over here one would let you comb the main particles the hair one is for the uh, the length one with one you can cut the hair and uh, like i can cut the hair over here and create a nice shape i can create a puff with this one so there is a lot going on over here so the first thing i'm going to do is uh, comb this one in the top view and uh, in the particle edit comb these particles so now we can basically comb these particles and uh, make them uh, like uh, stick together or so, like and shape however you want now in the top view i want it like this and uh, in the front view i'll comb them something like this all right so so i think it's going to take you a few attempts if you're like really new to hair particles like uh, how to bring a nice form with the uh, hair particles all of these uh, tools are like very simple to use shouldn't be much of a problem to understand what's going on over here if you need to cut few particles i mean the shape you can always make it look like a feather like this you just cut it out and this will make nice feather instead of a such a fine cut if you want to now randomize it you can take this one the length and randomize the shape a bit and now all i need to do is uh, play around with the properties and give it some rough look let's go to the object mode and see what is going on over here so we have a really basic looking shape over here now i'm going to adjust a few parameters in the particles adjust few of these parameters over here and see if we can get some more interesting shape in the parting section let's uh, decrease this one so we have some more random shape now over here if you see uh, these uh, the each the clump of the each each strand now if you increase the roughness this will increase the uh, this will make it non uniform i mean uh, this strand over here right now is a uh, one clump so you can add some reference reference to this one and uh, basically what we are trying to do is make make it look like a not really a smooth feather we want it to be like a rough that that's what we need we don't really uh, want this to look smooth and nice so just play around with these parameters and uh, give it some rough shape and uh, now if i go to the edit mode and enable the proportionate editing i should be able to sorry i'll just make a duplicate of this now if i go to the edit mode and uh, change my 3d cursor to a pivot point to 3d cursor now i can just shape my strand to a much more natural shape instead of a, such a straight strand and this way we should be able to make it look more like a feather so yeah this looks good i think uh, if i make a duplicate of this and uh, sorry i'll make a duplicate of this one instead make it a smooth shape and don't really just want to distort it much so i'll just rename this one feather main just in case if i need this for later now let's place it just like the reference i 
and later when we enable the dynamics for this uh, these hair object and when we have the wind and uh, the force fields going on so these things will move and and the shape of this will change according according to the forces so if i enable the hair dynamic you will see how this falls i can control the stiffness of the hair so all that we will take care later right now we just want to model it now over here there are few more settings that will enhance the look of this one there is a clumping option now this will make a if you prefer this kind of a look you can uh, select this one and then after that you can just uh, use the clamp curve and play around with this one this will give you a really fine control over whole over the shape and uh, how you want to distribute it the clamping along the the length of the uh, feather all right and uh, there is much more you can control so these things will take some time and observation like what is exactly going on and i definitely spent much more time i'll leave it to as it is for now and uh, we'll see later if we need to tweak when we are uh, rendering this object all right so this looks good and uh, now what we need is uh, we need some wax as you must have seen in the reference and in the main trailer there is uh, some wax that is dripping which is basically stuck to the surface and uh, it looks much better in the rendered view we also need one label for this bottle now for the label it's it should be really simple just select this bottle and make a duplicate of this and go to the edit mode and right now it's a curve object because we haven't converted this to mesh object so in your search menu just type convert and mesh from curve object and now it, you can select the vertices and all now what i'll do is i'll select this the center point over here and press ctrl plus multiple times and uh, expand the selection and basically we just want to extract this much for the label purpose after that i can just press ctrl i and delete all these faces this will leave you with uh, just the label that you need this one that we can texture later now i just want to create some offset so that in the render it doesn't overlap so a very small offset for this one I just moved all these vertices outside so yeah now we need to create some wax which is uh, going to be on the surface of the bottle for the wax part what we need is a few very random and organic looking wax drips all around the bottle as you've seen in the reference and in the trailer so for that what I'll do is I'll just create a strand I'll just create one uh, let's make a cylinder over here and make it around let's make it eight sides for now go to the edit mode scale this down make it a larger strand something like this and i'll add few loop cuts to this one now i'll just bring back my reference so basically what we need uh, basic shapes which are just following the contour of the bottle we need to make a few of these and then after that we can replicate this in the 360 I'll just hide the reference. I don't think I need it. I'll go to the edit mode and with the proportionate editing, I'll just start aligning the model according to the shape. Let's make it like this. Just try to get this shape follow these contours of the bottle. Now what we can do is we can go to the sculpt mode. Just randomize this shape a bit. Now if I select uh, the inflate, then I can make it more like a drip over here if i press shift and this will make it smooth and shrink it a bit you can also take the grab brush which is somewhere over here if you need to transform few vertices so yeah we need to create few of these uh, duplicates and uh, then after that randomize the shape so before i do that i'll just create a few duplicates of this okay there is no option for uh, origin to the world center so what we can do is shift s and uh, cursor to world origin and after that you can select this set origin to 3d cursor 
and now we can rotate this and make a duplicate of this. If I combine these with the control J and uh, let's apply one subdivision so we can sculpt something smoother and uh, now we can go to the sculpt mode and just randomize these shapes. So hope you get the idea of what is going on over here. So it's a very simple process. Now just take few different brushes and uh, basically I'm taking the, the inflate tool and wherever I want this to be thicker, I can just click and make it thicker. If I control click, that will make it thinner and that's about it. Uh, I can just randomize it, randomize it and with a grab brush I can just give it some random shape if I need to. That's all I need to do. Okay, in the sculpt mode. And now over here we need really thin shapes. So just press shift and this will smooth these shapes and make them really skinny so I'll just push these inside and uh, overlap with these uh, threads and you can also make a duplicate of this and in the edit mode I'll just select these ones in the wireframe mode I'll select these ones and delete the rest of them these we can uh, scale down place it over here like this so I hope you get the idea of uh, what is going on and so I'm just going to tweak all these shapes and uh, come back to you with the final results because this is going to take some time I don't really want to drag it too much all right so here's the final shape and uh, I made these more random so this took me a bit and uh, now I just need to adjust the scale and make sure nothing is really overlapping or getting intersected. So more or less I think we have our bottle model complete and now we need to shade this one and make it look like uh, what you've seen in the video. The first thing let's make a glass shader for this bottle. And for the label, we I have included the, the graphic for the label that you can use. The link is in the description along with the reference images that we just used in the viewport. Yeah, let's get started with the shading part. Alright guys, so now that we have our model ready, we can start with the shading process. And uh, for the shading, we are going to use Cycles Render Engine. And uh, make sure over here in the feature set, you select the experimental because we might would need displacement for some of these you can also change this later so that is not a problem so for some of you who are going to just follow this one chapter and not really interested in animation we are going to prepare one still image render and work on the presentation so that you have something for the efforts you are putting into this today so let's split this window into two and change this into shader editor and uh, let's preview the render and what's going on so this is a gray default dull render that you see because there are no HDRs or anything. So we are going to use scene, uh, viewport shading HDRs for now and let's just disable scene world. So this looks good. I'm going to hide my feathers, uh, feather objects and uh, the label so we can focus on the bottle. Let's make a new shader and name this one bottle shader. I'm going to delete this one and bring one simple glass BSDF, plug this into a surface and this should give you a clear transparent glass. Let's make this one into something darker. All right, this looks good. The only thing about this is this is way too clean and uh, the bottle object in, in my scene, I want this to look like an old bottle which hasn't been touched in years. It should be smudgy and rough. So for that purpose, we can uh, always use one roughness texture. For that, I'll just bring one image texture node and plug this into roughness. I'm going to bring one texture that I have. I believe this is from polygon.com. You can download 
from there there are paid and free samples all you need is a roughness map it could be scratches smudges anything that you prefer so right now this is way too intense for the for my need and i want this to be like really subtle if i control click over here let me just enable my screencast keys so just to preview i control click over here and this is way too bright what we can do is bring on brightness and contrast and now let's just dial this down a bit maybe minus 0.2 and control click over here as you can see this looks much darker and this should give us slightly different effect i think it's still too bright we can just dial this down a bit more 4.4 and decrease the contrast a bit so something like this should do okay so we have some some smudges and if you want feel free to just experiment so this looks fine for my purpose what we need is some tint in the glass and uh, for that we can add some tint over here a very subtle value of green like this yeah that's about it for glass now this tint value will just add color to this one uh, i mean the tint of the glass and there is one other way of adding like volume color into the glass and for that you can just bring volume ops option and plug this into volume and whatever color you bring over here this will kind of a, it's a volume shader so it works where wherever the glass is much more thicker or thinner depend, depending on that and depending on the distance it adds ops ops much more density into the glass so that is another way so that's about it for glass for now and what we can do next is work on So th this one is a bug uh, I've noticed uh, quite a few times. So just now my glass appeared green. And uh, when I exit the isolation mode, this volume absorption parameter is just uh, not working on this. So if that happens, all you, all you would need to do is just disconnect this one and plug it back again. So this is a bug and that, that's the reason I was using the tint in the glass. So this was kind of this was not there in the previous file so in the latest version i realized this is uh, a bug i'm going to report it you guys let me know if uh, this uh, this bug occurs in your file as well so other way is just bring some tint over here and that should also work for this purpose all right so the next thing i'm going to do is work on uh, this object which is the cap this cork object i'll just isolate this one and uh, bring one principled bsdf for this what we need is uh, some wooden texture, procedural wooden, wooden texture for this. And we can do that in multiple ways, but I'll just bring one simple texture for this one, which is going to be wave texture. And if I control click on this one, this is the default setting of wave texture. So we are going to combine two texture sets. One is the wave with the musk grave and one is the wave, just the wave texture with the different settings. Just dial this down to 1.2 so that so that we can see much larger waves over here. Increase the distortion and uh, increase the details and detail size so that we can see much more grains over here. Maybe increase this bit more, 6, 0.65. Now this is one texture. Uh, this will give you larger waves and in this if we plug one musgrave texture this will give us something like this and it looks really bad at this moment but what we can do is just decrease the size change this to the last option over here i quite i'm not quite sure how to pronounce this one so 1.92 and uh, dimensions maybe zero four point let's make it 4.6 so this is what what you will have with these settings i'll just press ctrl t and uh, change this to center of the object so this is the one texture we can in fact scale this down so that we have these larger waves and now we need another set of textures so for that we can just select all of these and make a copy now ctrl x to delete this one and connect this one over here ctrl shift t Control shift click to preview this one now this this texture i can uh, change this to saw instead of sign just change this settings so that we have a uh, slightly more variation i want this to have much larger waves like 2.5 
and uh, much more distortion 7.2 is fine 4.5 in the detail space so yeah this looks fine this one we can set the scale to 1 and now these two textures we can combine with mix rgb and plug this one down plug this one up and change this to add this is what you will get and right now it looks quite dull that's because we don't have any color into this one so if i bring one color ramp over here and give this one like a brownish wooden color this is our texture and now if we combine these sorry with our shader in the base color you will get this kind of looks really flat that's because we are not using any bump values for that we can use this one the first wave texture and plug this one into vector bump over here if i plug this bump node into normals this wave texture into the height you will get this bump effect in your geometry so we can definitely decrease this one so right now the bump is working fine but it still looks really flat and uh, to break that down what we can do is we can apply a displacement on this one now to for displacement to work make sure your subdivision modifier is using the adaptive sampling over here if you enable this one and after that if you render this bring one uh, displacement node over here plug this one into displacement into this height value we can use the same texture that we used for bump i think i'll have to change the material setting over here in the material properties just make sure in the displacement setting in the displacement setting in the surface panel select instead of bump only displacement and bump and this will give you a true shape of the displacement instead of just using that using that as a bump texture so as you can see over here it's actually distorting the geometry now which looks good and if i bring some other tech uh, other hdr over here it doesn't look as flat as before and if you feel like uh, combining these both of these textures for displacement purpose you can do that as well simply bring one mix rgb node over here and plug the second texture into second input and now it's using both of the textures for the displacement so i think this is fine i i don't quite like the second texture so i'm going to delete that and only the first one is fine and if you don't really prefer the displacement you can always just use the bump map which should look decent as well all right and you can always just tweak the geometry and use some randomization into this one like if i just select one node over here and uh, in the in the proportional editing if i enable the random now you can just rotate or scale something and this will randomize all your vertices now this will also work in case if you want to optimize your render it's not as detailed as this one but it still work now the next thing we are going to share is uh, these threads and uh, for that we can actually use the same texture which we used for this cork object we can just select all of these nodes with a control c copy and uh, select this one make a new shader delete all of these control v paste and this will copy everything that we made for this uh, cap object now if you want to apply this material on other object as well select this one select this one control l material and the same material will be transferred now this doesn't look really great and i'm going to tweak a few things maybe if i stretch the texture let's try normal over here and this will basically give you some random texture okay it's based on the normals but for this purpose this works fine i think and uh, into this i think we can increase the pump value it looks quite smooth in fact we can maybe bring some texture into roughness and after that increase the bump value maybe change the color to something brighter yeah this should work fine there's going to be a lot of wax on the uh, on top of this so i'm not going to bother and spend much time over here now let's work on the wax i'll enable the wax from here and enable the render 
now the wax material is going to be quite simple and uh, it's just a subsurface material if i click new material over here and rename this as wax all i need to do is uh, use the subsurface over here bring it all the way to one and as you can see if i isolate this one it looks like a wax in in here i can use some warm color and uh, in the subsurface color i'll just use some greenish color i can increase the specular so that we have some more reflections roughness is fine and i think you can tone it down a bit that's about it it's going to be as simple as that you can also work with a random walk and it's a latest subsurface model and it it gives you much better result over here as you can see in this part random walk will give you a much better much deeper results based on the like a ambient occlusion yeah i'm going to leave it to as it is and this works just fine for my purpose maybe some a bit more saturated color over here yeah that's about it this looks good and uh, now <clears throat> all i need is the main label object and for that i can enable the label from here and start working on this one now for the label we need one texture and uh, it's going to be a uh, quite simple let me just bring one uh, principal shader over here and in the diffuse value i'm going to plug in one texture let's bring one image texture base color and uh, let's open the texture that is provided in the description i'm going to select this souls logo 3 and this will give us this logo now all we need to do is tweak it a bit more first thing we are going to do is combine it with a transparent shader so let's bring one transparent shader over here and what this will do is if we mix it with the mix shader if we bring one uh, another image texture now this label to op this image if you assign over here and uh, plug this one into the factor value all those black and white values will uh, help as a cutout and uh, like over here you could see these white values all that will go away if you use this texture and combine it with the transparent one so you can also use a png image if you have and i think the png image supports the alpha channel already so that would be much simpler i didn't quite had png for this so a bit lazy on this part hope it's not too inconvenient right now this texture looks a bit dull and uh, we definitely need to bring some more uh, clarity to this one and to do that we can basically combine this principal bsdf and cheat with this a bit more so let's add a shader over here and bring one emission shader and in the emission shader i can uh, plug the same color from here and now if you dial down the strength you can just increase it slightly just so that you have enough visibility for this one okay and make sure you disable the transmission for this object in the visibility over here disable the transmission otherwise this will cast the light okay and uh, this scene is quite dark that's why i used the emission shader on this one and if you want to tweak it a bit more like uh, if you want to have much more rounder look you can always bring one color ramp and one uh, gradient texture if i plug this one into strength as you can see this gradient texture will give me like a round form over here and this is actually cheating it's not quite accurate but this is just to enhance the visual of the label because i really wanted this label to pop out and now if i plug this one over here and what i can do is make this one black and bring in one more no node in the center and make this one white so we have this round gradient like a cylindrical gradient and this will help my logo pop out even more so without this it, it was quite dull with this you can see my logo is much more clear right now it looks a bit too clean so i'm going to just use uh, one more texture just to break it down a bit more maybe if i bring one musgrave texture over here and combine it with this texture basically what i want is i want this the label to fade out in some parts so in the color mix rgb and plug this one over here in the opacity map and uh, plug the musgrave texture 
into the second uh, input over here and now this should give you a much more a bit different look basically instead of a flat opacity it's breaking it down a bit more not quite necessary but i i think uh, it does give give it a bit of a worn off look so this is good all right that's about it for this and now we need uh, our feathers so let's bring our feathers back to life focus on these two for the feathers we are going to use uh, principled sorry let me just bring one new shader and uh, make this one principled hair bsdf all right and same texture we can transfer on this object so i'm going to change this one to melanin concentration over here and uh, dial this down to really low value all right and we can change the color basically over here instead of uh, one flat color we can bring one gradient texture over here gradient texture let's put this into tint and this will give us gradient instead of flat value over here if you plug this one into tint let me just isolate this so that we can see the previews much faster and i can also bring one area light a temporary area light so that we can see how the things look with the lights so this melanin over here uh, with these parameters you can basically control how deeper or how well colored your uh, hair is and if you decrease this uh, the hair kind of start losing the color these are based on natural reactions like how the colors behave the pigment of the hair color so if you just bring one gradient texture into tint and plug this one over here what we need is uh, some sort of uh, red tone for this and if i make this one deep red let's copy this value and paste it over here and let's add one more no node and make this one into something really darker like this so this is just to bring some variation into flat color you can add more nodes and play around with the different colors so that is totally okay now keep in mind right now i'm using one material and uh, that is basically assigned to the hair and the strand for the both of objects if you want to give this one a different material and this one a different material then uh, you will have to create a new material in the slot over here and assign that one into particle settings over here uh, for the hair particle in the render you will have to pick that material from the second slot or the first slot whichever you prefer all right now let's see what is going on so yeah this looks fine and uh, i think i forgot to isolate the light so i think this is good and uh, we can leave it to as it is for now feel free to explore more and maybe throw in uh, different values into different socket play around and do some experiment if you feel like i think i can increase some roughness because these look way too glossy that's about it that's that's the whole shader for it's quite basic one but that's all we need so i think we have our complete bottle ready and all we need now is uh, work a bit on presentation what i think is this label looks way too bright and uh, to tweak this one i can just bring one color node mix rgb and uh, in here i can use uh, this as a factor and plug this one into base color make this one black make this one completely white and uh, this white color basically we can make into some yellowish like old paper and uh, now if we see and same over here this should give us warm color i think this looks good and uh, i'll leave it to as it is all right so our bottle is complete and let's make some exciting render out of this one all right guys so let's make a still render out of this one for some of those who are going to only follow this chapter and not really interested into animation i want you to have something good still render for the efforts you are putting into this today now before we proceed further i'm sure you might have noticed a lot of noise in the background all of a sudden that's because i had to disable rtx uh, 
audio and uh, it it kind of, it kind of slows down my render and also makes the whole audio very choppy so i hope it's not too distracting the first thing we are going to do is uh, set up the environment and in environment we don't really need any hdr the the only thing we need is uh, one shader which is going to be volume scatter make it around 0.005 so basically there is a lot of fog in the scene that you can't see at this moment because there are no lights. So if I bring one uh, light over here, area light, the intensity of the light we need to increase to around 500 or something. So all of this effect that you see is because of this volume, otherwise it's going to look like really stark lights and no very like absence of environment so i just plug this one i quite like this effect and this is what i'm going to use for the final render as well so one light we need in the background i also want a copy of this and this one shooting towards the top and this one can be giving us green color bounce light so right now our, the bottle as i mentioned we will be tweaking a few of the things when we start working on the render it looks way too glossy way too transparent i think we can tweak it a bit further let's just bring one glossy bsdf one uh, mix shader and plug it over here and plug it into this and now what we can do is bring one uh, layer weight over here and plug it into the mix shader factor so what's going on basically is Instead of the material being transparent everywhere, I wanted some part to be less transparent and receive more glossiness. So based on the, this layer weight, our glossy material is overtaking some parts. Now our bottle look less fragile and like it have more content inside this. Okay, so we definitely need more lights over here and for that, I'm going to make a duplicate of this again and place it right in the front in the front view maybe something shooting from the right side and let's see how it looks it's way too bright i can definitely decrease the intensity to around 300 or something and uh, this should look good now this fog i can uh, make it maybe 0 0.001 i don't want it to be way too obvious and right now these highlights we are receiving in the background uh, back of the bottle are because of the lights that's okay because uh, once we place other objects in the background that will not interfere with the visual of the bottle so i have these stones that i brought in from the previous chapter now for those who haven't seen the previous chapter we basically made one cube and in the object quick effect cell fracture if you increase the noise all the way and uh, maybe recursions then you will get these rocky forms which you can combine into different groups and make it into something like this so just play around with the settings i'm not going to go over it again i have one camera over here let's place it something like this so i just want this bottle to look like it's resting on top of these rocks and this looks much better and once we apply some sort of shader on top of these rock objects it will look much better and because we have one light which is at the bottom of the bottle it's also giving some green magical bounce to these rock objects now i'm going to create a new shader for these rocks over here it's going to be pretty simple shader compared to the rest of them actually all of these shaders are quite basic so i hope you guys are able to follow along so take it slow understand it one by one and it's quite experimental so feel free to play around with all the settings and you might end up with a results which could look better than these so in the principled bsdf node we need some sort of texture and uh, as we have done this quite a few times let's bring one uh, musgrave texture over here in the musgrave texture we need some sort of noise so i'll just type it over here i find it very easy and uh, because i've been using multiple software so i kind of uh, confuse all these all these textures and okay so in the musgrave texture we are going to use a uh, scale of two we want something uh, big over here bigger shapes and uh, increase the detail and uh, decrease uh, the dimensions so that there are more defined uh, noisy shapes over here and 
yeah that's about it for this and once we plug this one into vector over here or we can also bring one uh, wave texture and plug this one into this now we are going to combine these two textures we are basically going to bring one uh, converter math and plug this into vector and in the first input we plug noise texture in the second input we plug the wave texture all right let's change this to diagonal decrease the scale by 0.2 distortion by 5 details are fine detail scale could be a bit higher yeah I think this this would uh, work for our purpose now let's add some finer details to this maybe 7 9 and uh, increase the detail maybe 12 alright so we have some sort of texture over here I think if I increase the dimension over here it will I mean I just I'm just playing around with these uh, once you have these uh, either noise into Musgrave or wave into Musgrave uh, these textures connected then after that you will have to play around with few of these settings these are quite experimental features and uh, it's not quite exactly pre predictable so you will have to memorize like a uh, few of these combinations and how it works so I'm going to plug this one into base color yeah this will give me this texture on top of these rocks now we can bring in some color for this let's bring one color ramp let's give it some more nodes add some brownish color maybe add one more node over here give it some sand color now right now it looks quite dull and stupid that's because we are not using any bump map but once we bring a vector bump map over here into the normals and plug this one into the height now this will give you this nice bump and make it look like uh, something basically rocky all right it's not a it's not a perfect texture for this but i i quite i kind of like it it's it's not bad and this can definitely improve i think uh, we can definitely spend some more time into this and, uh, we will talk about all of this in um, some shading tutorials in the future and uh, i'll dedicate more time to this but for this purpose i think it looks fine i quite like it so i'm just playing around with colors now i can bring one more light over here the bounce light that we created I want some of these rocks to receive some green color bounce as well this is going to be slightly less intense something like this yeah this looks good I guess now for those of you who are really who really want to push it even further this chapter concludes here this is what what we need our bottle is ready and we are ready to move on to the next chapter but for some of you who want to invest some more time into this visual and uh, create one nice still i think we can add some smoke into this and i'm not going to go into the much of details of the smoke just play around with the position of the, these lights so that i can find something which works perfectly so i'll make a duplicate of this light i want some light to be here on the left side of the stones as you can see as soon as i move it over here the duplicate we have some really nice looking i mean the light on the stones and uh, that looks good I can definitely decrease the intensity of this and scale it down and just focus it on the back of the stones it's uh, the rocks basically and now one more thing we can do is uh, make a duplicate of all these rocks place it over here yeah place it over here in the in the foreground I just want a slight hint of rocks one in the foreground one in the background and uh, this light over here in the front is creating too much reflection so maybe push it away a bit what I can do is I can really add some fog over here there is a shortcut for doing that what I'll do is whatever texture that we created for these rocks these musgrave and all these combination we basically need some random texture copy these and make a cube over here let's make one cube right in the center over here 
all right now let's create a new material for this and it's going to be a volume scatter material and plug this into volume now paste the texture that we brought from the rocks and plug this into density so just move move it down let's see what is going on over here so this cube over here is basically receiving the same texture that we created for the rocks which is good for our case the only thing we need to do is uh, tweak the scale a bit make it sorry about that it kind of gets heavy with the volume fobs so we need to just uh, combine a gradient texture with this so that this top side of the box doesn't look so hard so let's bring one uh, gradient texture and uh, combine these this one with the converter math make it multiply and plug this color in the gradient color into this one if i control shift t you can see the gradient is working from this side to this side i can press control t and rotate this gradient texture to uh, into the y direction make it 90 and move it up and down like this maybe minus 90 should work and now when you look at the final result the fog will basically fade in into this and that looks good now we can bring one more multiply node and increase the intensity so that we have much more better looking fog i mean the visible fog and you can also do one more thing you can now uh, subdivide this box a few times with the proportionate editing randomize enabled just uh, decrease uh, increase your brush size and give it some random shape let's press ctrl t over here change this to object i'll just uh, play around with the size uh, the, the gradient a bit more and move it down now I'll just increase the size of the texture uh, sorry decrease the size of the texture so that we have bigger shapes in the volume and uh, yeah this looks good i'll just make a duplicate of this place one more copy in the background over here and i think yeah this will work for our render now let's go to the environment in the world properties uh, let's increase to 0 0.005 0 0.003 should work now feel free to work more on these volume objects i think if i spend some more time on this we can have we can really improve the quality all right i think more or less we are done the only thing i'm going to do is uh, in the environment volume scatter i'm going to add some tint in the lights i'm going to bring some variation so that the left side is a slightly different color very subtle effect should work for this yeah i think uh, we are ready to render and uh, let's make sure our samples are set to around 256 and we have denoising enabled we can also render out some passes if needed So that's about it. I'll render this one and come back to you with the results. All right, so here's the final render. And now all we need to do is do some color correction and tweak the exposure. So I added a glossy pass layer on top of the main render in the screen mode, added a bit of mist 
with a color screen and reduce the opacity just a slight hint of depth and play it around with the levels tweak the exposure a bit and added some glow a very subtle effect nothing too exaggerated i just wanted to emphasize the level a bit more so i masked it and played with the level a bit over here so nothing too fancy i just did a lazy quick job and here's the final render so i hope you guys like it and uh, this concludes our chapter number 5 of animated content creation series. I really hope you guys are enjoying this series and following along. Do let me know what are the ideas you guys are working on. I would love to see it. If you are new to this channel, subscribe, share and don't forget to enable the notifications for the future chapter of this series. By the way, a lot of you stumble upon a random chapter and sometimes they don't really find the rest of the series because videos are in random order on the channel page. But if you go to the playlist section, you should find each series playlist perfectly aligned, sequenced for you to watch in the right order. Follow us on the Instagram, tag us with Instacrossmind, check out the rest of the playlist. I will see you guys in the next chapter of this series and let's complete our scene with the rest of the elements so we can start simulating smoke and fluids and add some dynamics to make it more exciting. So bye for now, take care and good luck.